So we want to welcome you uh, to this webinar on uh, social principles. Um, social principles uh, are part of our book of discipline. Uh, Matt can explain a little bit more of that. Um, but we have uh, probably more discussion in the United Methodist Church about our social principles, especially right now, than we have about anything else in in our um, in, the, in our book of discipline. And uh, people uh, have varying opinions about these. And so uh, Matt's going to kind of unlock that and um, show us um, a little more about what we believe and what the social principles are in our denomination and why that makes a difference in our local churches. So I uh, appreciate Matt Steele, uh, who is pastor at Peachtree Memorial United Methodist Church. Uh, just went there in June. Matt and I have been working together for the last few years on the Connectional Ministries team. He's also been an active member of the Justice team for the last four years and uh, has been working specifically uh, with that team with the social principles. And so uh, he is a, a very natural uh, person for us to ask to lead this uh, webinar. So very thankful. Uh, for him uh, in doing this. And so I would like to begin uh, with a time of prayer. And then, Matt, I will give it to you and uh, you can begin your presentation. Um, for those who are new to this, um, down in the right hand corner is where our chat room is. And you are welcome to uh, ask any questions, um, give any comments as Matt is presenting. And I will uh, alert him and let him know uh, what is being asked or what is being said. And we want this to be very much interactive and uh, more of a dialogue as much as we are able to do so uh, in this format. But feel free uh, to ask questions or make comments in the chat room. And we will hopefully uh, walk away with a better understanding of our social principles. So let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, you are good to us. We thank you for how you have already been at work in this day. And we want to uh, thank you and give praise uh, to you for this. And we thank you that we can gather together in your name and that we can share um, about social principles and uh, what we believe as United Methodists and so we thank you for Matt and his leadership in our conference and at Peachtree Memorial. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, continue to lead and guide him in his uh, ministries and uh, be with the rest of us, Lord, who are participating. Uh, you have a call upon each one of our lives, and we want to be faithful to that. Continue to use these uh, times together to help us discern what that call is. And we pray all of this in your precious name. Amen. All right, Matt. Um, let me just say, while Matt's bringing up his screen, uh, we tested this earlier today and also tonight. There's been a couple times when, um, for whatever reason, the Internet um, just kind of shuts down on Matt's part. So if that were to happen, uh, he's just going to hop off and then get back on. And um, we will uh, continue. So just hang in there. We're praying that it does not happen uh, during his presentation, though. So I uh, wanted to give that instruction in case that were to happen. All right, Matt, thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Tammy. And uh, it's good to be with you all uh, this evening. And so, again, as Tammy said, uh, if you've got questions, uh, please don't hesitate to, to type those out or to let Tammy know, and she will uh, uh, let me know what those are. I certainly do not have all the answers, um, but I know a lot of people that may. Uh, so if I can't answer your question, I'm sure I can direct you in uh, the right direction for that. Um, you'll see on the PowerPoint there uh, my cell number, the office number here at Petrie, and then my email address. Uh, please feel free to uh, jot those down. Uh, or to uh, call or email if you have questions. 
uh, any further questions um, after our uh, discussion this evening. We're going to um, speak again, as we've already mentioned, on the social principles. And it's always interesting to, to talk about this because I get the opportunity with this to talk about things that I was raised never to talk about around the dinner table. Uh, politics, uh, money, um, you know, hot topic issues, things of that nature. And this is uh, effectively what we're doing when we, when we dive into the social principles. Uh, most of the debates or, or comments or conversations you've had with various people uh, in church or in your own life um, around various issues that you've seen uh, in society or things of that nature are probably covered in some form uh, or another in the social principles. And so it's uh, great for us to see that there has been thought already around this uh, within our, our denomination. And it gives us, uh, if nothing else, a good starting point uh, for some of that dialogue. And so it's important, uh, first of all, that we know kind of what the church has maybe said about some of these types of things. Uh, and, and secondly, to know that uh, we have people from all over the world that have helped kind of speak into this. So it's not just uh, some person sitting in a dark room writing down their thoughts on various things. This has been dialogue that is that is ongoing and continues uh, even to this day. Uh, you'll notice here on this second screen just some of the, the resources. This is just a, a brief list of resources uh, that we have. Uh, of course, the 2012 Book of Discipline uh, of the United Methodist Church, and I'm sure that the paragraph numbers are subject to change when the 2016 Book of Discipline comes out, and I know we're all eager to to get that and to start reading it when it comes out. Uh, you'll see the, the picture of the book Justice in Everyday Life, uh, a look at the social principles of the United Methodist Church by Neil Christie. And I received this uh, a few weeks ago and have been reading it, and it's a very good uh, resource, not only to, to learn about the social principles, but it uh, also gives a practical application into how to teach them. And it's broken up into uh, six sessions uh, to kind of teach the social principles in your context and, and have the opportunity to share uh, that with uh, those in your congregation or those that you have uh, the opportunity to talk about them with. There's also uh, an introduction to the social principles that Dr. Charles Brockwell uh, put together. He was on uh, that uh, social principles kind of team that uh, Tammy had mentioned uh, I was part of. And ours uh, was the task of beginning to look into the opportunity to offer some type of curriculum or some type of format uh, for teaching the social principles within the congregations, and uh, within the local church. And so what you have, I, Tammy has a copy of this, I believe that I emailed to her, and she uh, can make that available to you all, uh, along with this PowerPoint, uh, if you would like that. And again, this is the work that Dr. Of our introduction for that. And then, of course, uh, if you don't have a book of discipline handy, you can go to uh, the um, web address there at the bottom, umc.org, uh, what we believe, social principles, uh, and it's got them all there as well. So these are, again, four uh, resources, certainly not an exhaustive list, uh, but a very good starting point uh, for that. We want to uh, begin by just noting that the social principles are found in part of the Book of Discipline. Uh, you'll find the, the page numbers there and again the corresponding paragraph uh, numbers. And so there are six main areas uh, of, of concern for the uh, uh, various social principles, the natural world, the nurturing community, social community, the economic community, the political community, and the world community. And then of course following that is a preface and a preamble and then our social creed uh, follows that. And so we're going to spend uh, our time looking at all of these uh, briefly, of course, just within the hour uh, time that we have. And again, the, the purpose of this uh, is to let you know kind of what the social principles cover in a very general way uh, and to, to see that, again, uh, most anything that you've had uh, passionate discussion about uh, around various issues probably finds its, its self somewhere in the social principles. And we, again, want to be mindful uh, of that. 
So we want to start with uh, just the preface, and I've taken a few. I've not put it out verbatim from the Book of Discipline, but I've taken just a few of the what I consider kind of the highlights of some of these just to kind of give you an idea of what they are speaking to. And so uh, in the preface, the social principles, while not to be considered church law, are a prayerful and thoughtful effort on the part of the General Conference to speak to the human issues in the contemporary world from a sound biblical and theological foundation as historically demonstrated in United Methodist traditions. The principles, social principles are a call to faithfulness and are intended to be instructive and persuasive in the best of the prophetic spirit and are a call to all members of the United Methodist Church to a prayerful studied dialogue of faith and practice. In the uh, document that Dr. Brockwell put together, he uh, looks at the social principles and kind of the, the purpose of them from scripture uh, and from other things. And part of the, the story of our social principles uh, he reminds us here, as we have just seen, uh, that the social principles are just that. They're principles, and they are not law. As uh, United Methodist clergy, I'm, I'm bound and have made a covenant to uh, follow the Book of Discipline and to follow the, the laws and the procedures and the things that, that take place. The, the social principles, on the other hand, uh, are not things that we have to agree with wholeheartedly. Uh, there can be area of discussion and uh, debate around those, and there commonly are. Uh, if we uh, watched any of uh, this last general conference, we saw some of those issues being uh, uh, debated and discussed. Um, but the social principles are a call to faithfulness uh, in the best of the prophetic spirit. Uh, and what I really appreciate about that statement uh, of, of the prophetic spirit is knowing that this is our understanding of these things now. And as we continue to be in prayer, as we continue to be in dialogue, as we continue to uh, study scripture, uh, we do not have to solidify uh, right now all of the components of what life should or shouldn't look like. And we can continue to be in that dialogue uh, as we are and as we receive fresh understanding and, and uh, begin to see things from other perspectives as well. And I think that's uh, a lot of the time, a lot of the difficulty around uh, these issues and especially uh, the social principles, is the uh, inability or the uh, refusal uh, to see things from someone else's perspective. Uh, we continue on uh, then in the, the preamble. Uh, we, the people called United Methodists, affirm our faith in God creator and father and Jesus Christ our savior and the Holy Spirit to guide our guide and guard uh, we acknowledge our complete dependence upon God in birth and life and death and in life eternal uh, we affirm our unity in Jesus Christ while acknowledging differences in applying our faith in different cultural contexts as we live out the gospel uh, again we are a worldwide church and there are an infinite number of cultural contexts that we find ourselves in. Uh, Tammy had mentioned to you all that I just moved to uh, Petrie Memorial, which is in Elkton, Kentucky. Uh, it's a very uh, rural town. I think Todd County is the second smallest county in the state. Uh, and before that, I was in Winchester. So just again, within our own state, within our own conference, uh, the cultural contexts uh, are completely uh, different. Winchester, while not a huge city, is far larger than where I, where I currently am. And so beginning to get an idea of the culture and uh, getting uh, to know the people, uh, beginning to apply uh, my faith in ways that speak to those uh, who I am privileged to serve uh, for and with and alongside uh, is very important. And we do well, again, to remember the different cultural contexts that we have. And again, as a worldwide church, recognizing the differences uh, that will go from state to state, uh, from county to county, uh, from continent to continent, and recognizing that we all believe in Jesus Christ. We desire uh, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Uh, but how we go about that and how we interpret that and how we see that uh, is going to take on different forms. Uh, and again, uh, we do well to remember that. 
We acknowledge that because it is a living body of believers gathered together by God from many diverse segments of the human community, unanimity of belief, opinion, practice has never been characteristic of the church from the beginning uh, to this day. And so again, in our preamble, we simply state and recognize and affirm uh, that we're not unanimous across the board. And that's okay because we're continuing to be in dialogue. And I often find that the people I have um, the most difficult time dialoguing with are people that tend to hold me uh, the most accountable uh, if, if I'm paying attention because they ask questions that maybe I'm afraid to ask or they say things uh, that maybe I've been thinking but haven't had the courage to say myself. Uh, and so again, we do well to remember that. Uh, and here, this last part of the preamble is what I want us to, to again, be very mindful of. Uh, we commit ourselves to stand united in declaring our faith that God's grace is available to all that nothing can separate us from the love of God. In that confidence, we pledge to continue to be in respectful dialogue with those with whom we disagree, to explore the sources of our differences, to honor the sacred worth of all persons, and to tell the truth about our divisions as we continue to seek the mind of Christ and to do the will of God in all things. And so again, you see I've underlined those, and I've even... Uh, especially highlighted respectful dialogue. Uh, again, that will take us much further than debate uh, and anger and things that tend to uh, surround the various issues and topics uh, that the social principles cover. And so again, uh, as you hear that, and as I want to read it one more time, and I hope that we will, again, commit and recommit ourselves. Uh, to stand united in declaring our faith that God's grace is available to all, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. In that confidence, we pledge to continue to be in respectful dialogue with those with whom we disagree uh, and to explore our differences, to honor the sacred worth of all persons, to tell the truth about our divisions. Uh, right now, we are at a, uh, an interesting time uh, in the life of the church, and we have the opportunity to kind of do all of these things and live this paragraph out in a very real way. And so uh, I'm excited and prayerful uh, as we continue to move forward as a church. I hope that you are as well. Um, as uh, I mentioned before, we've got the six uh, sections, uh, the primary sections of the um, uh, social principles that we want to look at. And so before I get into those, uh, Hey, Matt, uh, so we've lost you, um, kind of froze up on us, so if you'll just take a minute, how about while he is hopping back on, um, why don't, why don't uh, you share if um, you have any questions or any thoughts about what Matt has shared so far about uh, the preamble and um, social principles in general. Okay, so Patty says no questions so far. I think it's been um, part of our um, ongoing discussion in the United Methodist Church is um, we think we all have to agree on the same things and uh, come to the same conclusions. And I think we're having those pains of uh, not agreeing on all of our uh, social principles and wondering, you know, can we continue uh, to move in such a way um, without uh, agreeing on everything? Um, but can we be united um, in, in in other things and continue to move forward. Um, so I think that is, you know, part of the discussion that is, is taking place at the general church level. And um, 
been very prayerful these days um, regarding that. So, all right. All right. Sorry. Hey, that's okay. We can help technology and um, happen. So. All right, so no questions so far, Matt. You're doing such a great job of explaining that. Clear as mud. Good. All right. Clear as mud. All right. Um, so, okay, so now we are, are getting into now the natural world. Uh, paragraph 160. Uh, each uh, of the sections of the social principles have um, an opening portion that kind of give a, a brief uh, synopsis of the whole and then it'll break off into the, to some of the smaller groups. And so, again, we want to uh, kind of look at those because they kind of help us understand this portion in a nutshell. So for the natural world, uh, again, I've taken, I've picked and choose some of the sentences that I think kind of encompass it the best. Uh, and so, again, you will find it in full in the Book of Discipline. Uh, but all creation is the Lord's, and we are responsible for the ways in which we use and or abuse it. God has granted us stewardship of creation. We should meet these stewardship duties through acts of loving care and respect. And of course, we remember from Genesis uh, 1, uh, 28 through 31, God gives us the responsibility to uh, be stewards over the earth. The first uh, great commandment to be fruitful uh, and multiply and to uh, watch over this world that we have been given, and we are to do so uh, through acts of loving care and respect. Uh, the Israelite people, the Jewish people, uh, are very concerned uh, with the earth and with its resources, and because they feel like that command has been given directly to them. Uh, and we know as descendants of Abraham, as followers of Jesus, that uh, command has been given to us as well. And so we do well again to remember uh, that we are to take care of the natural world, not just for ourselves, but of course for the generations uh, following. Uh, my dad used to always tell me when you go somewhere, leave it better than you found it. Uh, and so I'm sure that is uh, something that we've all heard or been told at some point. And so uh, how are we leaving things better than we found it for the next generation that's coming behind us? And that's really kind of the intent, uh, I think, around this uh, aspect of the social principles. Uh, therefore, let us recognize the responsibility of the church and its members to place a high priority on changes in economic, political, social, and technological lifestyles to support a more ecologically equitable and sustainable world leading to a higher quality of life for all of God's creation. And so then we get into the main areas of the, uh, that the social principles speak specifically to. Uh, water, air, soil, minerals, and plants, um, energy resources for energy resources utilization, animal life, uh, global climate stewardship, space, uh, science and technology, food safety, and food justice. Now, again, uh, a lot of these uh, speak very specifically almost to the sense of science. And again, um, I can remember as a kid growing up. Uh, science and faith always seem to be enemies, uh, and we know, of course, uh, that they are not. They go hand in hand. I, I often look at science as asking um, all of the, the how questions. How do these things work? How do those things work? And, uh, the church uh, has the opportunity to ask the why questions. Uh, why have these things been put here? And so we have the opportunity uh, for that continued dialogue uh, between faith science and where science asks can something be done uh, we have the opportunity to ask should it be done uh, how does that help or hinder uh, life and those that uh, are currently living and of course will be living uh, later on and so again uh, for water air soil minerals and plants we support and encourage social policies that serve to reduce and control the creation of industrial byproducts and waste, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're going to see a lot of language uh, that we support or we encourage or we discourage or we don't appreciate or like, and that's kind of the language that is used 
kind of throughout, and again, something for us to be mindful of. Um, hey, Matt. Yes. Uh, Alan would like for you to explain food justice. Food justice. I, that was one of the ones I was going to hit because I knew that was probably going to have a question. Let me read it for you. It's it's just a paragraph. It's number or letter H. We support policies that increase access to quality food particularly for those with the fewest resources. We affirm local, sustainable, and small-scale agriculture opportunities that allow communities to feed themselves. We decry policies that make food inaccessible to the communities where it is grown and the farm workers involved in its growth. So the food justice would have to do with helping uh, feed and give sustainable food to those that don't have it uh, for uh, to to use uh, a Jesus term to to look out for the widows, the orphans, and those in need. I think the national average um, is one in five children. Uh, the only meals they really get on a regular basis are school meals. I know there are several counties in Kentucky uh, where all of the children that attend the public schools are on the, the government assisted uh, lunch program. And so the food justice would be making sure that everyone has uh, enough food uh, to eat and to sustain life and that we are giving appropriate measures uh, for uh, people to not just receive it, but to grow it uh, and, and process it themselves. And so that would be kind of the food justice uh, area, as I understand it. Um, I've moved again, as I said, to Elkton, uh, and there are farmers all over the place. I, cornfields everywhere. Uh, and so it's a very different uh, context for me, uh, but having the opportunity to kind of see uh, where that starts um, and to see uh, how we want to make sure that everyone has uh, enough. I'm also reminded of the, the book of Ruth where it speaks of um, uh, Ruth goes out and gleans, right? And as they're harvesting, uh, they leave those things which have fallen. They leave them on the ground per the, the law, the requirements uh, that were given uh, by God in the first five books. And, and those are to be left, the corners of the fields were to be left for uh, the widows, the orphans, and those in need. So again, the food justice is uh, making sure that everyone has enough. Uh, and a large part of that, I think, falls on, on us that maybe have too much. The food safety uh, is one that really speaks to me because I worked in food service for several years. Uh, and so uh, I, I have seen how, how things are run in the kitchen and food safety is definitely uh, something for us to be aware of and definitely something to support uh, for sure. Any other um, questions about any of, of these? Uh, and again, you'll have time to type and we can come back uh, if we need to. And so we will we'll do that. So our, our next portion Oh, I'm sorry, that was then all of the natural world. Um, and so we'll move now to uh, the nurturing community. Hey, Matt. Uh, sorry again, you, um, I think when you moved uh, PowerPoint, so if you can uh, restart again. Internet is a wonderful thing and uh, works for most of our places, uh, but again, when we are uh, more in a remote area, uh, it's not always guaranteed as it is in some of our, our um, more uh, metropolitan areas. So um, you'll hang on one second. I'm sure Matt will be joining us again. So um, Alan, I want to know, did uh, Matt explain the food justice? And did anybody else have any other questions about our natural world and our stances on, on that area? Often we don't think about um, 
for example, you know, that we um, believe certain things, um, we may not vocalize them. Uh, we have values um, around uh, some of our creation and uh, food and things like that, um, but not necessarily what we um, have, you know, thought to sit down and actually think through what do we believe about that, what is our uh, is our value around that. So I appreciate, as Matt said, those who have gone before us and have taken time to do that. All right, I think every time we get to a new section, yeah, it'll cut out. So at least it's cutting out in a good spot. Uh, so again, right. I'm sorry about that. Um, were there other questions about the, the food justice? Um, um, Mark Clark says food justice is communities existing their right to grow, sell, and eat yes. healthy food. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes. And um, one of the, the things, as I don't remember exactly where it cut off, but I was, I think I was telling you that some of these overlap. Um, and so you may see the, the, a similar aspect of it showing up in another uh, part of the social principles and it's covering it from another angle. Uh, the other thing that's uh, important for us to remember um, is that um, each of these, um, Sections, uh, I don't remember what I was going to say now. Anyway, I'm all messed up with this. Well, it, it's not like they're, um, they're segregated in a sense. That one doesn't overlap with others, but they all kind of um, relate to one another. And so yes. It's not these separate things that you have this life over here, and then you have this over here, and this over here, but they are... Um, they, they do work together and go hand in hand a lot of times. Yes. Yes. And that, now I remember what I was going to say. The, um, one of the things that uh, is important with, with the social principles, and you'll see it more in some of these others, uh, but even in the other, some that we've already discussed, is that you will undoubtedly have experts in some of these fields, people that are working in various areas uh, in these. And so um, I encourage you to Again, uh, you kind of froze up on us, so uh, sorry. Um, this usually doesn't happen this often uh, on a webinar. Um, so, again, if um, you have any thoughts or you want to share, I'll match join us again. I'm going to go ahead um, while Matt reboots um, for us. Um, so the next thing he was going to talk about is actually the nurturing community. Uh, this should come very natural for the church because uh, we should be known for um, being nurturing to each other and to uh, relationships that we have um, to other people. And so I know that's uh, a big part of what we're going to do, uh, I mean, what we believe in, and uh, what Matt will be sharing with us next, is a nurturing community. All right, we're just going to dive right in this one. Um, all right, so the nurturing community uh, is the next, and the, um, again, the kind of the overarching, the community provides the potential for nurturing human beings into the fullness of their humanity. Uh, primary for us is the gospel understanding that all persons are important because they are human beings created by God and loved through and by Jesus Christ and not because they have merited significance. Uh, we therefore support social climates in which human communities are maintained and strengthened for the sake of all persons 
and their growth. We also encourage all individuals to be sensitive to others by using appropriate language when referring to all persons. Uh, basically, what our, our moms always told us growing up, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, and so in the nurturing community, it uh, encompasses these various aspects. And as I was saying uh, before I got cut off, find people in your communities or in your churches that are uh, working in these areas. Um, I know that I have valued and, and held high value in the ministerial associations that I've been a part of in the various places I've been uh, and having opportunity to um, uh, meet those who are working in pregnancy uh, uh, assistance, uh, those that, that work in, in rape crisis assistance. Uh, Marion Brown uh, is a, a clergy person down here in Hopkinsville who works for Sanctuary Inc. Uh, and they help uh, people uh, escape abusive relationships, primarily women. And so she is one that I would want to call on uh, for uh, speaking about some of the things that the nurturing community uh, speaks of here in the social principles, because she can uh, give uh, real life experience and understanding and stories to some of these things that you just can't get as you're reading uh, through the social principles. So we see here it covers the family, uh, marriage, divorce, single persons, women and men, human sexuality family violence and abuse, sexual abuse, sexual harassment, abortion, ministry to those who have experienced an abortion, adoption, faithful care for dying persons, suicide, and sexual assault. And again, uh, when you start to uh, get into groups that maybe are wanting to talk about these, uh, or if you're wanting to teach on the social principles, it's very easy, especially in our day and age, to really hone in on one or two of these. And it is important, I think, for us to give weight to all of them because all of us are going to, just from this page, have someone that we know who has uh, experienced something uh, in, this, uh, in this section. And so one thing may be really important to me or to someone that I'm aware of and something else may be important to others. As I have taught this in my own uh, uh, context and different churches I've been a part of, as we've gotten to different uh, sections, I've asked everybody to tell me uh, three or possibly four of these things that they would really want to look at. Uh, and that keeps me from just focusing on the ones I want to talk about. It helps me get a, a wide uh, spectrum of what others want to talk about. I think the first time I taught the social principles, we spent time on each one and just did it during Sunday school uh, as the time allowed and we just pick up where we left off. Uh, the next week, but we want to make sure that we don't focus on any one thing because at the end of the day, all of these that the social principles covers carry the, the same weight. Uh, they're all important. They're all important to uh, people all across the world. And if we focus on any one thing too much, uh, we're effectively saying that the rest aren't that important. And we're also, I think, giving way too much um, power to any one issue. Uh, and so we want to be careful not to do that. Now, uh, our, our church has not been good at doing that here recently, uh, but we want to make sure that uh, everything is being looked at and, and, and that we are giving the appropriate amount of time to the, the various things that are brought up and that are needed uh, to be discussed. And so that is the, the nurturing community in, again, a nutshell. And again, uh, words uh, like we believe, we affirm, things of that nature, we recognize, uh, that's going to, again, be the, the type of language. And so, again, there, when it comes to these and even the social community next, there are going to be areas where all of us are going to have our varying opinions. And so we are reminded, again, that these are principles, uh, that the church has been in dialogue with over many years, and that the social principles give us a starting point for discussion. Uh, okay, so we want to be mindful of that, and again, remember that, because again, even with these here, we can start to get into some heated uh, discussion if we're not careful, and above all, we want respectful dialogue across the board, uh, and that's something to, to foster, and I find that doing those glory sightings as we did earlier 
and beginning even this type of discussion uh, with prayer uh, gives us the and reminds us that we are uh, coming and, and hoping uh, to end up at the same place and to uh, again be in dialogue with each other. Uh, we move then into the, the social community. <clears throat> this was the, the the part that I was looking specifically at when we were doing some of the work we were doing. Uh, but in the social community, we affirm all persons as equally valuable in the sight of God. We therefore work towards societies in which each person's value is recognized, maintained, and strengthened, and we support the rights of all persons to equal access to housing, education, communication, employment, medical care, legal redress for grievances, and physical protection. Uh, our respect for the inherent dignity of all persons leads us to call for the recognition, protection, and implementation of the principles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights so that communities and individuals may claim and enjoy their universal, indivisible, and inalienable rights. This is the largest grouping uh, of subsections in any of the social principles. Uh, and what I've done, as you can see, there's 24 different items here. And so what I did as I was working on this is I put them, I like to put things in nice, neat little groups as I'm sure I'm not the only one that likes to do that, but you can see uh, I broke them into um, six kind of larger groups and then put them all together. And we've got uh, what I've entitled Loving Our Neighbors, and it speaks of the rights uh, and speaks specifically to the rights of all of the various people that are listed. And so again, at the end of the day, um, this first part is uh, A through K is a recognition of the rights that, that people have and the rights we believe they have because they've been created in the image of God. Uh, not just because America says so, but because God has created all of these people. And so we want to be mindful, uh, again, of them. Uh, abstinence from harmful substances, and we've got alcohol and other drugs and then tobacco. Um, and so, again, the church's official stance on those is abstinence. Um, and so we want to, again, be mindful uh, of that as well. And, and the tobacco issue is, uh, has used to be a, a huge issue, especially with a lot of the tobacco farmers uh, in, in the state and, and with uh, those that were, uh, you know, United Methodists attending church and growing tobacco. So that was a huge issue for a while. But again, it's continuing that dialogue, continuing that discussion. Uh, care in the use of medical sciences, uh, again, medical experimentation and genetic technology. Again, just because we can do something, should we do something? Of course, the church uh, speaks to, to those things. Protection of livelihood and vocation, uh, rural life, sustainable agriculture, and urban, suburban lifestyles. And that covers uh, the gamut, really, in, in people and where they live and, and the things of that nature. And I'm learning rural life here in, in Elton. I grew up in Louisville, uh, and so urban suburban life is something I certainly uh, understood much more of, and so I'm learning uh, now the, the rural life in the context of that and, and getting to see and, and appreciate uh, much more of that uh, than I certainly ever did before. And then care in the use of media and technology, uh, media violence and Christian values uh, in information, communication, technology, uh, and again, even in our boundaries training, we start looking at the harm that can come uh, through social media and things of that nature. And so again, just being mindful of, uh, I, maybe some of you are just now seeing this. Oh my goodness, I can't believe the church has got a, you know, a, a section on, on that. Uh, and so again, knowing that, that we've already been in dialogue with this. I think it was uh, John Wesley that said, theology that isn't practiced isn't theology. Uh, and so the social principles is the opportunity for us to dialogue and practice uh, what we say we believe uh, and really kind of put uh, feet and hands to um, the things that we say, uh, especially when it comes to issues such as these. And then care of persons with specific needs, uh, persons living with HIV and AIDS, rights to health care, organ transplantation and donation, and then mental health. There is a uh, Sunday, I think in November, uh, that is organ donor day or, or something like that. Tammy, I don't know if you remember exactly. I think I've got it. Organ and Tissue Donor Sunday uh, is November 13th. And so again, uh, recognizing 
uh, the opportunity we have not only to be good stewards of the planet, but of our bodies as well, and of those that we may have the opportunity to help uh, should something uh, like that happen. Uh, and then mental health there on the bottom. And again, in my context, um, I'm 20 miles away from uh, Western State uh, Hospital which is a, a mental institution uh, here in Kentucky. And so I would have the opportunity, if I were going to talk about this, maybe to talk to someone who worked there uh, and, and maybe get an opportunity to kind of uh, get to know more about uh, the issues uh, that those people face uh, that most of us, again, are, are ignorant to or unaware of uh, for one reason or another. And so, again, as you see the <coughs> social principles here, maybe something catches your eye and you think, man, I really want to know more about that. Uh, and so I would encourage you to uh, find out if there's anybody in your area that, that does that, uh, or maybe you could speak to about that. With the rights of the various people, we've got, uh, you know, our, our uh, committee on uh, youth and young adults. Uh, we've got our children's committee. Uh, we've got uh, the older adult committee, things of that nature. So these are already uh, connections we have within our own conference where we can talk to those people and find out how are, how can I uh, uh, minister to those people uh, in my context and where I am. Um, so where I don't, again, I don't see any questions, so I will assume we're all on the same page and, and we'll move on to the uh, economic community. Uh, we claim all economic systems to be under the judgment of God no less than other facets of the created order. Therefore, we recognize the responsibility of governments to develop and implement sound fiscal and monetary policies that provide for the economic life of individuals and corporate entities and that ensure full employment and adequate income with a minimum of inflation. <coughs> Excuse me. We support measures that would reduce the concentration of wealth in the hands of you. We further support efforts to revise tax structures and to eliminate governmental support programs that now benefit the wealthy at the expense of other persons. And so within this grouping of the social principles, you have uh, these listed before you. Uh, property, collective bargaining, uh, work and leisure, consumption, poverty, foreign workers, gambling, family farms, corporate responsibility, finance, trade and investment, graft and corruption, and public indebtedness. And I think one of the questions for ordination uh, is, are you in debt so as to embarrass yourself? Uh, and so again, the church uh, takes that seriously and recognizes um, uh, what debt can do and how it can paralyze uh, <clears throat> and even affect uh, ministry uh, in many different ways. Clarify religious minority. Yeah. That is back in minority, the. Minority, yeah. The clarify. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. That will be back. Let me remember which one that is. All right, B. Under the so, social on. communities, all right. Uh, loving your neighbor. Yes, yes, yes. Right all right. Um, I'll, again, this is a short one, so I'll, I'll read it. Um, rights of religious minorities. Religious persecution has been common in the history of civilization. We urge policies and practices that ensure the right of every religious group to exercise its faith free from legal, political, or economic restrictions. We condemn all overt and covert forms of religious intolerance, being especially sensitive to their expression in media stereotyping. We assert the right of all religions and their adherents to freedom from legal, economic, and social discrimination. Uh, so again, uh, the rights of religious minorities, again, in America, the minorities would be uh, those religions that are not Catholic or Protestant by and large. And so giving uh, and reminding ourselves uh, that at one time we were the minority uh, 
and we want to give them the opportunity to express their faith in God in the way that they deem most fit. So uh, I don't know if that clarifies that anymore. <clears throat> See that he's typing. So we'll give him a second. Mark is continuing to and so yes. he might have something to add to that. Um, what of those outside Christianity? I think that that would cover cover those as well. I think that, that would say uh, the right of every religious group uh, to exercise its faith, um, and so that would include all uh, religious groups. Um, again, it doesn't mean that we have to agree uh, with their practices or who they are, but we uh, should give them the same freedom to express their faith the same way we hope that they give that to us as well. And that's, uh, but still witness the truth to them, is what Mark is saying. Yes. A absolutely. Yeah, and I think the best way for us to, to witness the truth to them is to to not beat them over the head with who I, who I think they should be, um, but recognizing uh, and even learning uh, from from their faith and and their uh, religions um, practices that that we can glean uh, that would help us to know uh, and and serve God better uh, in our own context uh, would certainly be helpful. Uh, I think um, specific, I'm thinking specifically right now of uh, the Church of uh, Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints and their um, uh, part of their responsibility is family making. My uncle is uh, a Mormon, lives in California, and uh, I think it's every Friday. They're, they're mandated to take one day or one night a week to just be family and put everything away, and put everything aside. And so uh, they have the opportunity to do that. And that certainly should be something we should do more of, uh, I think, in our own, in our own lives. And that's a mandate uh, that they have. And then, yes, approaching them in the character yeah. of Christ. Because Christ never uh, told anyone outright they were wrong, except for the Pharisees, and the people that were trying to prove him wrong. And really, he he told them a lot of stories. And and what's interesting about the parables that Jesus told is a lot of them, uh, the conclusions are left unresolved. We don't know exactly what happened. Uh, we have the story of the, uh, the the prodigal son, and we don't know what the the older son decides to do. Uh, we don't know what becomes of the the father or the younger son. Uh, later down the road, and so we're left to kind of figure that out for ourselves. Uh, and so we have that opportunity uh, to do that, which, um, again, we should give to others that opportunity as well. Uh, yeah, Mark says in, in the news today, the Church of Satan designed to move into high schools for meetings and social functions. And right. so, again, we have this competing uh what we call competing values uh we want to be accepting right. and respectful of people for where they are but yet we also want to um we don't see the want... kingdom of, of jesus christ we don't want to uh any damage or um uh for the kingdom of god not to have the uh, ability to, to move forward as well and so we have these Right. Try to hold these things um, in balance, um, and uh, certainly um, that disturbs us. Um, right. And uh, and we want. And to... I think the other thing is we don't want extremists. I mean, we would not say, even though we respect other people's religion, I think the extremists of any religion um, that especially tend toward violence. We would not, uh, again, because we believe in the, you know, each person is of sacred worth. And so we would not want to, um, you know, uh, promote or encourage uh, any of that um, uh, in any way, you know, in, in respecting their, their rights for their religion. We would not want to promote their things with violence or anything. So yeah. Right. And we, is, you know, and we want to help protect those protect those who uh, might be hurt by others. Um, 
you know, and again, uh, we can protect without hurting. Um, and yeah. So thank you, Tammy. Tammy is wise. Um, we're running almost out of time, and I have a, a SPR meeting to get to here in a few moments. So uh, we'll proceed to the economic community. Uh, I, I mentioned those, and then we've got, uh, of course, uh, property, collective bargaining, work and leisure, uh, which we've talked about. And a lot of that is just, again, making sure that we have a balance uh, and that there is not um, any overarching uh people that are, are hurting the, the others and, and make sure that everyone has, you know, what is what is needed and what is necessary uh, for life uh, and for the inalienable rights, again, of, of all persons. We move then to the political community. Um, and while our allegiance to God takes precedence over our allegiance to any state, we acknowledge the vital function of government as a principal vehicle for the ordering of society. Because we know ourselves to be responsible to God for social and political life, we declare uh, the following relative to governments. And again, here we have basic freedoms and human rights, political responsibility, church and state relations, freedom of information, education, civil obedience and civil disobedience, death penalty, criminal justice, and restorative justice, and military service. <clears throat> and so again, with these, um, I think it was uh, one of the quotes John Wesley uh, said was, um, in voting there are three rules, uh, vote for who you believe to uh, be the, the best candidate, don't um, belittle uh, those who disagree with you, uh, or he said, vote, vote your conscience, don't belittle those who disagree with you, and then uh, support the ones that are elected or something like that. Tammy, I'm sure I'm uh, completely butchering that, that phrase he gives. Um, but especially, uh, again, in our, in our climate, in our uh, society, uh, the political community, this may be a, another hot topic as well, uh, as we see. And so, again... As with all things, we are beginning uh, the conversation. Uh, the political responsibility, uh, which is one that I think there may be a question on, is the strength of a political system depends on the full and willing participation of its citizens. The church should continually exert a strong ethical influence upon the state, supporting policies and programs deemed to be just and opposing policies and programs that are unjust. And so again, uh, bringing our faith into uh, into politics, and, and every time the word king, oh, every time the word king shows up um, in scripture, it is uh, political, uh, and so we we do well to remember that, uh, to remember that a lot of the things we talk about uh, have political ramifications and things of that nature, and being reminded that. Again, above all, uh, Christ is our king, uh, and, we, and we serve him uh, to the best of our ability. <clears throat> Move now to the world community. We are uh, God's world is one world. Uh, this generation must find vi viable answers to these and related questions. If humanity is to continue on this earth. We commit ourselves as a church to the achievement of a world community that is a fellowship of persons who honestly love one another. We pledge ourselves to seek the meaning of the gospel in all issues that divide people and threaten the growth of world community. Uh, and then within this one is uh, nations and cultures, national power and responsibility, war and peace, and justice and law. And again, uh, seeking to begin uh, the conversation. And as I mentioned earlier, there are many nations, many cultures, many contexts uh, that we find ourselves in, even with our own within our own uh, annual conference here. And so being mindful of those, uh, knowing that with great power comes great responsibility, recognizing that uh, war and peace uh, are at times necessary, uh, given the, the various things. We remember from 
Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything under the sun. And peace is an absence of conflict, uh, but it is a recognition of conflict uh, and uh, seeking a just resolution uh, to that conflict. Uh, I want to close uh, our time together, if there are no other questions, uh, with our social creed. Again, this is on paragraph 166. And, and where you are, I just want to ask you to join with me in reading this. And uh, though um, I won't hear you all and, uh, and you won't hear maybe everybody else, we will be reciting this together. Uh, and I want to thank you all again for the opportunity to share with you. And I apologize again about the uh, uh, Internet failing. And if it fails in the midst of this, then uh, you just keep reciting it as you're able. And, and uh, thank you again. Uh, so uh, let us uh, affirm our social creed together. We believe in God, creator of the world, and in Jesus Christ, the redeemer of all creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, through whom we acknowledge God's gifts, and we repent of our sin in misusing these gifts to idolatrous ends. We affirm the natural world as God's handiwork and dedicate ourselves to its preservation, enhancement, and faithful use by humankind. We joyfully receive for ourselves and others the blessings of community, sexuality, marriage, and the family. We commit ourselves to the rights of men, women, children, youth, young adults, the aging, and people with disabilities to improvement of the quality of life and to the rights and dignity of all persons. We believe in the right and duty of persons to work for the glory of God and the good of themselves and others and in the protection of their welfare in so doing. In the rights to property as a trust from God, collective bargaining, and responsible consumption, and in the elimination of economic social distress. We dedicate ourselves to peace throughout the world, to the rule of justice and law among the nations, and to individual freedom for all people of the world. We believe in the present and final triumph of God's word in human affairs and gladly accept our commission to manifest the life of the gospel in the world. Amen. Well, Matt, we appreciate you and uh, you sharing with us um, uh, and kind of unpacking the social principles for us so that we have a better understanding of that. Uh, so thank you very much, and thanks for being patient with us um, in uh, the Internet. And um, I know, Matt, you have to uh, run along yes. uh, to a meeting, and so thank you. And if anyone else, uh, I will stay on if there are any other questions or thoughts you want to share. And um, we can continue um, that discussion. So blessings on you, Matt. And um, they are saying thank you, Matt, um, for um, all that you did. You're very welcome. So if there are no other questions, um, we will conclude this webinar. and. Um, thank you very much, and God bless you as you uh, continue to minister in your community.